Hello, Graham here again. Now, in part one of how to find your niche, I explained what we mean by the term market and niche, and how we can use a simple survey of our employment, hobbies, interests, etc., to focus in on possible niche areas. In this video, I want to follow through with one of our niche choices and show you how can we use the free online tools to analyze our choice and really see if there is potential in this area. Let's just remind ourselves about table we used last time. In this table we spent about 30 minutes or so listing possible niche areas under four headings. Work and background, hobbies, interests and ideas. I hope you managed to have a go at this yourself and I'm sure you're quite amazed at the number of potential niches. For the focus of this video, let's now look at one potential niche area. From my lists, I'm going to choose weight training to explore further. It's something I'm really passionate about and I'm relatively knowledgeable. I should therefore be able to communicate with some authority about this topic. We're now going to go into Google and the first thing we do is type in the search box external keyword tool. Now this is a really useful and free application from Google. With the keywords tool we can see what people are searching for on the internet and analysis will also help us to collect together a range of important keywords. Now in the find keywords box we type in the words we've selected from our table of possible niche areas. In my example I'm going to use the words weight training. Next, I type in the security letters and then click on search. After a few moments, the results are displayed. The first 100 most relevant keywords are listed, starting with weight training. Alongside the keywords are four bits of information. It's worth pausing at this stage just to find out what these terms actually mean. The first column represents the number of advertisers bidding in Google on each keyword. The bigger the bar, the greater number of advertisers bidding. The bar size is approximate has no relative units. The second column is the global monthly search showing for our keyword selection the approximate monthly numbers of user searches. This column focuses the search data even further for chosen locality and language. And the final column shows how the number of searches fluctuates over the 12 minute period across our chosen locality and language. Again, the search data is approximate and has no relative units. Our analysis of keywords and searches reveals that weight training really is a viable market, but it's very big and we really need to narrow down our selections until we find a more suitable niche within the weight training market. We're looking for what I call the Goldilocks niche area. And by that I mean one well, with not too many searches, i.e. too much competition, or too little interest. To continue with our analysis, we're going to extract the relevant data and export it to an Excel spreadsheet. Here we use a download box to select all 100 keywords that we're going to use. The pop-up box now tells us the keywords are going to be downloaded into an Excel spreadsheet in CSV format. Now I'm quite happy with this, so we'll be clicking on the download button. Let's now switch to Excel and begin formatting the data into more friendly style. OK, so now we're in Excel and what's happened is all of the um, 100 keywords with the accompanying data have been put into a spreadsheet. I want to tidy up the spreadsheet and get rid of um, a lot of the data we don't actually need. So first of all, let's have a look at uh, select this column here and let's go into auto fit so we can see it more clearly that's what we want there let's say a lot of these columns we don't actually want so let's start deleting some of these columns so let's delete that one we'll keep global with the searches we'll get rid of all these months going on here to that point there and again we will delete all those columns sheet columns there we go so we're left now with just um, the two counts for global monthly searches and local monthly searches and the keywords on the left. Now what I want to do is actually put these in some sort of rank order. So let's highlight the whole lot. Okay, so let's sort those by the monthly 
searches. Let's go in and do a custom sort here. And I want to sort by local monthly searches. So let's put that one in. And I want to go from largest to smallest. So change that criteria there. Put it in. And there we go. There's all the keywords ranked by local monthly searches. Now some of these keywords, for example Pilates, um, treadmill, um, dumbbell, kettlebells, these are words I don't really want to focus upon anyway. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause the video at this point and I'm going to actually delete the, the, uh, the keywords that I'm not interested in. Okay, so what I've done is I've removed keywords that were not particularly relevant. Uh, they said things like books and DVDs and specific dumbbell exercises and diet plans. These were not of great interest to me, so at this point I've just deleted them to try and focus in on the more relevant keywords. And I'm particularly interested in uh, those keywords have a monthly search between about 5,000 and about 2,000. So those are not um, too popular and also those that have some interest. So let's just select those. I'm looking at these here particularly. Let's go down as far as that one there. We'll include the and women as well. So that one there. Okay, so these have um, a reasonable sort of searching without being too competitive and without being a little interest. So let's just highlight those. Now these are the uh, keywords that I'm going to focus on. And what I'm going to do now is actually put these into a simple um, PowerPoint program so I can build a library now of more specific keywords. We're now back in PowerPoint. We now have a Goldilocks list of just under 15 keywords. I like to keep my keywords in a very accessible and searchable file. So I hyperlink on a PowerPoint slide the main keywords with all the possible variations. For example, if I click on weight training, I can call up a separate slide with all the keywords that were just downloaded and sorted from Google. As an example, I've also used a free Google keyword tool for weight training routines. And I've built up the following list. Notice alongside a Google keywords list, I've got another column called website tags. I'll be explaining the use of these in the next video. OK, so let's stop the video at this point. I hope that I've been able to explain clearly enough how we can use a Google Keywords tool to focus upon a suitable niche within our chosen market. In my next video, I want to introduce you briefly to other free tools that we can use in our search for the most suitable niche. If you have any questions about this video or any other issues concerning internet marketing, then please visit my site at www.easierinternetmarketing.com and send me an email. I'll be in touch again very soon.